Thank you for joining me for today's video. I think we're on episode six of this series, which is where I give you my impressions on hyped or popular fragrances that are making the rounds in one way or another on one of the social media platforms or maybe several. In these videos, I do sort of a rapid review on 20 fragrances that I have sampled. So I need to get the sort of disclaimers out of the way. I'm not big on disclaimers, but it is important when we're talking about sampling. And I've made lots of disclaimers before in other videos in the series about the pros and the cons of sampling because there are both. Sampling can sometimes be just as expensive as blind buying, but it does have its pros and its cons. I reviewed that in other videos, so I won't get into that in this one. But I will say for the purposes of you hearing my opinion and deciding for yourself whether it's something that you want to listen to or not or put any credence behind, remember, unless you have a full bottle of a fragrance, and you dedicate an entire day to wearing that fragrance properly, in other words, giving it a proper spray on several areas of your body, it can be really difficult to tell from a decant whether you enjoy a fragrance or not. I've had the experience of thinking I love something from a decant, purchasing a full bottle, and it wasn't the same experience. <laughs> but I've also had it be the other way around where I've given up on a sample thinking, I don't think this is for me, and then I come across a bottle later on, or I try it again and actually give that decant a full day's wear alone as its own fragrance and decide that I really love it. So it's a little bit all over the place, and in that sense, these videos are really just to give you an idea of general thoughts about the fragrance and for entertainment. So with that enormous long disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about some fragrances that have been making around here on social media. I'll start with two from the House of Kerosene. I'm really interested in this house. So the two that I'll talk about are Follow and Followed. And the way that I do these reviews is I give you my thoughts across four categories. One is it a mass appealing fragrance, meaning would a large percentage of the public, if they smelled it blindly, would they like it and not know what they were smelling? Would they think it was a pleasant fragrance? What are my impressions of the fragrance in terms of how I would describe it? And what is the performance of the fragrance in terms of the projection and longevity? And am I interested in the bottle? And I'm looking down at a spreadsheet that I keep of these uh, as I test them out and record my thoughts. So follow is a maybe in terms of mass appeal. I would describe this as a freshly roasted coffee. It gave me vanilla and hazelnut syrup. I found it to be something like a darker coffee addict from Theodoros Calatinus, which is a beautiful, that fragrance, that coffee addict fragrance is for me to die for. It's sort of a genuine coffee with a beautiful caramel syrupiness to it. One of my favorites. So this is was to me moderate to strong all around in terms of projection and the longevity. And then in terms of me buying a bottle, I have down maybe not right now, but I do love the bottle and I do think this, a, this is a really nice fragrance. So it's one that I would look for in the future. I have a really nice selection of coffee fragrances, so I'm not super pressed to get this, but at the same time, it was it's one that if somebody asked me about it i would say yes this is a really nice fragrance so then let's move on to followed which is a flanker of follow and that's also a maybe in terms of the mass appeal factor i found this to be a lot like follow the original except it's sweeter it has even more creaminess than follow does and more of a pronounced caramel note to me I enjoyed this fragrance. I found it to be moderate all around in terms of projection and longevity. And I don't want a bottle of this right now because I have Coffee Addict and Coffee Addict scratches the same itch for me. But when I run out of Coffee Addict, this might be one that I would be interested in exploring and adding to my collection. So I think that both of these are really beautiful fragrances and nice options for coffee and caramel lovers. Uh, and one that you should check out, this house is really interesting all around. The history behind the house and the owner and why he started the house is interesting. And I find the bottles to be really pleasant looking and would like to explore more from this house. So then let's go on to 724 from Maison Francis Kirkjohn. This is a house that I have resisted purchasing fragrances from because of the cost, to be quite honest with you. Gentle Fluidity Gold has won over my heart, and I have gone ahead and purchased a full bottle, even though I was working off of a dupe of that as well. And I may have purchased Grand Soir by the time we filmed this. I'll let you know here whether it made it into the, <laughs> the rotation or not. So let's talk about 724, the latest release. So this is one of those houses and fragrance Dubois and houses like that, Roja Dove, where if they release something, Fragcom, particularly on Instagram, goes sort of a flutter and they're interested and want to check out the fragrance and see if they like it and it starts to make the rounds. So I was curious about this one. 
Mass appeal, maybe. I think it depends on the nose of the person smelling it. I think it would be particularly more appealing to a mostly male audience, although I do know some uh, females who love this one as well. I found it to be a super clean, soapy fragrance. It reminded me of the color blue. It reminded me of Dial Soap in particular, D-I-A-L, if you're familiar with what that soap smells like. And I enjoyed it. What I didn't like is that for me, at least from the sample, it got a little bit stale in the dry down, like it got a little flat for me. And that happened too recently with Stilettos on Lex from Julemad, which I loved when I sampled it. And then when I got it home and did a full day wear, it was really nice for a few hours and then got a little bit flat. So I want to be cautious about purchasing fragrances like that. So it was moderate all around in terms of the projection and longevity. And would I want a full bottle? I think that this is not for me, but I do think it has a very pleasant opening. So I'll leave it at that. If you like a soapy fragrance, a clean fragrance, and if this house appeals to you and you don't mind shelling out the big bucks for this kind of fragrance, go for it. And if you don't mind that it gets a little bit staler later on and you just are fine with that beautiful, soapy, clean opening, maybe this is one that you'd be interested in. I find it to be slightly masculine as well. So keep that in mind. Maybe a little bit more than slightly. Maybe it is you know, in masculine territory. I'm going to go next to the super popular vanilla royale sugared patchouli from Kayali. I have several Kayalis, the vanilla 28. I have a little mini of sweet diamond pink pepper, which is really nice. A little mini of deja vu white flowers. And I had a little mini of elixir, elixir 11 and sold that off. Nice fragrance, but I didn't need it in my collection. I was really curious about this one. A lot of my lovely fragrance friends here on YouTube just love this. So I got curious. I have FOMO like everyone else and want to make sure I'm testing the latest stuff too. And so in terms of whether I think this is mass appealing, it's a big no. I think this is a very particular kind of fragrance and someone who's newer to fragrances would probably find this to be a challenging one. So hear me out on the description and keep those tomatoes in the bowl on your side. Do not throw them at the screen, okay? <laughs> My description of this, <laughs> am I going to say this out loud? I found it to be a rotten, fruity, skanky, creme brulee crust. Have you had creme brulee? The crust of it is like that brown, sugary, deliciousness, milkiness. It has like milkiness to it. Or maybe it's creamy. It's creamy and it's, uh, you know, like a, a burnt brown sugar. It was like that with like a skanky, fruity, overripe fruitiness on top. And also, smell to me like earthy, dark, chocolatey patchouli. That said, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Hang on. It did remind me of something else. I have a Rasazi fragrance that has oud and some other notes in it that just from patchouli that reminded me of this fragrance quite a bit. So in that sense, I felt like I had smelled it before. It reminded me quite a bit too of Nightfall patchouli from Carolina Herrera. Not identical, but in the same family. And it did get sweeter and it got stronger in the dry down. So in terms of projection and longevity, this one is the beast that people claimed it is. It went on for, well, maybe not a beast, but it went on for quite a while. And it had some really great projection, again, from the sample that I tried. Would I want this? Despite my strange description of it, it's a strong maybe. I would actually like to try this one again. I think you all know I really enjoy odd and different kinds of fragrances. This is not your run-of-the-mill fragrance. It really isn't. Uh, for me, I just hesitate because I think I have, like I said, one or two others in my collection that smell similar enough that I'm not sure that I need this one, but I can see how people love it. And certainly if you're an adventurous fragrance wearer, I would say, check this out at Sephora. Go sniff it if you have a Sephora nearby and see what you think of it yourself. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. And if you have tried it, drop it in the comments. This has been a polarizing fragrance where people either love it or they can't stand it. For me, I am probably in the heavy like territory. I enjoy trying it. I go next to Sublime Vini from Creed. So <laughs> Creed is one of those houses, and there are several, House of Sillage, Byredo, and Roja, that I think are just, for my, in my opinion, just incredibly overpriced for what they are. Kriegler is another one. Uh, bond number nine, although I forgive bond number nine because I love the theme of it. I love the aesthetics and I can usually find those on deep discount. So we're cool, but those other ones, it can be hard to find on discount. And uh, I would say that 
at the risk of having those tomatoes leave your bowls and getting thrown at me, I just find that they're really overpriced fragrances for what you get. So that said, I'm still like sort of interested in the House of Creed, but also sort of turned off by the astronomical prices. But you can find Creed on discount sometimes. Raved about fragrance, raved about. I mean, people, reviews on this, people go bananas. I don't think that this is a mass appealing fragrance. I, well, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Have you tried this? Let me know what you think. My description is that it's a citrusy herbal vanilla. And maybe the reason that I'm averse is because <laughs> I find this to be very bland for the price. This is a fragrance that if it was in a $30, you know, designer or celebrity bottle, no one would really take a second look at it. And it would be pleasant enough and really worth it at that price. But at the price that this one goes for retail and even sometimes a discount, it's a little bit insulting in my opinion. I think that this is moderate all around, maybe even a tiny bit on the weaker side. And I don't want a full bottle of this. It's a big nope. I find this to be a hugely overpriced fragrance for what it is. That doesn't mean it's not pretty. I'm just not into paying these kind of prices for fragrances that are incredibly, incredibly ordinary. Not that there's anything wrong with an ordinary fragrance. I always talk about that, right? Not not every fragrance has to blow your mind and knock your socks off and slap you around for you to enjoy it, right? <laughs> um, not that we enjoy being slapped around. Where did that come from? <sighs> but if you're going to charge me big bucks, I want it to have at least a little touch of uniqueness. Moving along, Dia from Amouage, another one that some people really, really love. For me, in terms of mass appeal, I have a no here. I'm kind of hoping that I just got a decant that was not properly put together or that was exposed, you know, to the elements or something, because my description of this is I found Dia to be foul, foul. I did not enjoy this at all. I wanted to love it because the description seemed like it was right up my alley. It came across as a combination of hairspray and wilted lilies, and sweaty coins. Like if you've had a handful of pennies in your hand in the summer, and your hand got sweaty, the smell that the reaction, the smell in the reaction from the sweat in your skin, it reminded me of that. And I feel like it got very stale and bizarre on the dry down. Let me know if you've had a different experience with this fragrance. And again, please don't be offended. <laughs> it's just my experience from a little decant, right? If you have a full bottle and your experience was different, let us know in the comments. And in terms of the projection and longevity, let me tell you, this was a fragrance that would not give up. <laughs> it would not give up. It clung to the area where I sprayed it forever and ever and ever and ever. I could not get rid of it and it bothered me. I don't want a bottle of this myself. Again, let us know if you've had a different experience in the comments. I always welcome a difference of opinion and like for viewers to be able to see a variety of thoughts on a fragrance so that they can make up their mind as to whether they want to try a fragrance, sample it, or whatever. Next is Iris Malacan, which is one that I was really interested in. Iris and violet and those kinds of cold notes that can be a little bit you know, powdery and stiff. I call them stiff notes, formal notes. A few years ago, I would say that I wasn't enormously into them. I enjoy them, but not as much as I do now. So I'm getting more and more into Iris as a note. I was really interested in this. I do not think that this is a mass appealing fragrance at all. I do think this is a classic powdery Iris scent. It's, it wasn't unique to me, but I did find it very, very pleasant, particularly if you like a traditional lipstick smell, like the way a fresh lipstick smells that has that sort of Iris kind of makeup note in it. It was smooth and it was buttery on the dry down in particular. So it got more sort of thick and buttery and maybe even creamy on the dry down. And that was the part of it that I enjoyed the most. I found it in terms of projection and longevity to be moderate all around. Would I want a bottle of this? I for myself said no. I don't need this because I have other irises in my collection that I really enjoy that are not very different from this. It is very pretty. I do think that it is expensive for what it is, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it. This is a really nicely done fragrance that I found to be very pleasant. I just don't particularly need to add it to my collection. If I were in Iris territory and wanted to spend a few big dollars, this would be one that I would probably check out. I go next to Elang in Gold from M. Mikalef. 
So here's a house that I have thought about purchasing from a couple of times. I have waited until they've run sales. I've added a few to cart. I've been interested in Ylang in gold, and I've been interested in Note Vani. Both are really pretty fragrances. Ylang in gold, I have Hane More, which is incredibly similar. I mean, in the air, it's hard to tell the difference between those. And in terms of the Note Vani fragrance, I have enough that smells similar to that, that I think I want to hold off on that, although it's a beautiful fragrance. So Ylang and Gold Nectar is one that I've been interested in, wondering if it was dramatically different than Ylang and Gold. So Ylang and Gold Nectar, let's talk about that. Is it mass appealing? I would say an absolute yes on this. I think a lot of people would really enjoy the way that this smells. I have to say when I sprayed this one, it opened very quickly, like for the first 20 or 30 seconds, a little bit vinegary. Has anyone else had that experience with this particular one? But then it became this very buttery, creamy alang with a touch of powder. I found this to be a really sophisticated, lovely fragrance for late spring into summer, maybe even early fall. I'm interested in a bottle of this, spoiler alert. It was moderate all around. It wasn't the longest lasting and the most projecting, but I did enjoy it and found it really pretty. I am interested in a bottle of this. I would want the white one that has the little gold flecks on it. I'm not sure that I would want it in the clear bottle. Anyway, this is a yes. I found this to be really, really pretty. Next is Santal Basmati. Mass appeal. If you're a sandalwood lover, this is an absolute yes. This is like a no-brainer yes, in my opinion. Description. Absolutely a sandalwood fragrance. It also has other general woodiness sort of outside of the specific sandalwood scent. It smelled like the steam that you get when you cook white rice. So, you know, the basmati part refers to rice. So there is that steaminess that you get from white rice. A hint of iris. I found this to be simple as a fragrance, but very beautiful for what it was. If you're into a fragrance that is not terribly complex, but simple in its beauty or beautiful in its simplicity, however you want to look at that. It is a really soft fragrance and I found it to be moderate in terms of longevity. So would I want to bottle? Maybe I think this is really lovely, but it's rather pricey for what it is. And so again, I'd love to wait to see if this, you know, shows up on discount sites. I think it has before and I maybe have missed the train. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this on fragrance net for sale and just for, so Oh, I know, I know why now I'm remembering. I'm remembering it was still rather expensive on sale, but I like it. I think it's a really pretty fragrance. And if you're the type of person that likes simple rather than complex and soft rather than loud, this is a really, really nice one. Santal Basmati. Let me circle then to another M. Mikalev fragrance, Soleil Passion. Um, I like the way these bottles look. I'm interested in glamour that looks like this, that same bottle. So if you've tried that, let me know. For Soleil Passion, in terms of mass appeal, maybe. I'm not quite sure if a lot of people would love this. It came across to me as citrus. It was soapy. It had some florals. And while it was nice, I found it to be a rather like, unremarkable fragrance. Again, we're talking about for the price point, right? In general, it's, it's a nice fragrance. It was moderate all around in terms of the projection and performance. And I don't, I'm not interested in a bottle of this. I didn't find it special enough to pick up. I do think the bottle is pretty. And if you're looking for a simple citrusy, you know, floral fragrance that has a clean vibe to it, this might appeal to you, but it's, it's a no for me. Next, one that some of you suggested to me, and I've seen a few reviews of this fragrance. I'm really curious about it. It's Creme de Clear. I believe that's how you pronounce it from BDK. This is one that a number of viewers on the leather video that I did a while back commented to try this. So I went ahead and got a sample. Is it mass appealing? Maybe. And I say that because leather and suede are notes that you either love or just like are repulsed by and stay <laughs> far away from. I particularly love suede and leather and fragrances. This creme de cure, queer, I always want to say cure, creme de queer is soft and buttery. I also found it, even though it's buttery, to be fluffy at the same time, like a fluffy suede. It was ethereal is the word that I would use to describe it. Smooth. There's supposed to be pineapple in this fragrance. I did not pick that up from the decant that I have, but I still enjoyed the fragrance nonetheless. I found it to be really pretty. It was soft and subtle in a way that appealed to me if you're in that kind of mood. And it's a strong maybe for me in terms of what I want to purchase a bottle of this or not. I do have a lot of leather 
fragrances and some that are suede. So if one of those makes its way out, this would be a strong contender to replace something that would go out the door. Really, really lovely. And if you don't have any buttery, suede, uh, leathery fragrances in your collection and you look in the neighborhood for one, you're, you're looking for one, I would definitely say check out Creme de Queer. Another Amouage fragrance that I recently tried and that has been getting a lot of attention here on YouTube is Material. Material. I really love the bottles from Amouage. I think Amouage, Amouage, Amouage. I think the bottles are simply gorgeous. This is a pricey house. However, this is one of the houses that I will say the fragrances are typically unique enough that the price tag, whether I want to pay it or not, doesn't bother me right? Like whether I decide to buy it or not is on me, but I can certainly understand why they're priced differently than their competitors in the market because they tend to be very on the unique side, very different, very noticeably different. And if you smell them on people, you won't be thinking that they smell like other things that you're aware of for the most part. There's some exceptions. So in terms of mass appeal, this is a maybe, I'm not quite sure how people would receive this, for me, this is a little bit different than others have described. I found this in the luxurious range. I would give it definitely that stamp of a luxury smell, but like a luxurious aromatic soap with, with vanilla, a heavy vanilla, it's a vanilla fragrance, and amber running throughout it as well. I found this to be a very pleasant wear. I enjoyed the way that this smells. I found it to be moderate to long lasting all around. And in terms of a bottle, I said maybe because I have a very many lot of vanillas right now that I'm trying to work my way through a little bit more. I don't need this in my collection because of that. I have some others like the, I have absolute aphrodisiac and fragrances like that from Anishio that have a little bit of spice, a little bit of an animalic touch to them that scratch the same itch that this one would. I, so I don't need it, but I will say that Material is a very nice fragrance. I can totally see why it's getting a lot of hype on YouTube. And if you're in the market for something like that, look, gorgeous bottle, really nicely performing, beautiful fragrance. Go for it. Let's talk then about two Zerjoff fragrances that have made the rounds. I'll start with, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Tony Iomi, 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 Monkey Special. Help me understand why it's called this. I admit I did not look up why it's named this beforehand, but I'm curious if you know, let us know in the comments. I do not think that this is a mass appealing fragrance. However, let me tell you about the description. This is a spicy, woody fragrance. It came on really strong in the opening. As it calmed down, it was a little bit more smooth to me. This is moderate to maybe long lasting all around. So would I want this fragrance? I like the bottle on this. It's a really cool bottle. I wish I knew a little bit more about the name and I could probably just Google right now. I could pause and Google, but I'm not going to do that. It's a no for me in terms of, do I want this fragrance right now? I have others that are similar to this that give me that woody, spicy, really deep, wintry, beautiful fragrance kind of a feel. So I don't need this, but I do think that it's fabulous. I can certainly see why people are in love with this and enjoying this. And I do think it's a great fragrance. So definitely a thumbs up on this. Then we go to Starlight, another one that has recently been making the rounds and gotten hyped up here on YouTube and a little bit on Instagram. Yes, I do think that this one is a mass appealing fragrance. My description is a little bit strange, but wait for, wait for it. <laughs> I found it. If I had to describe it, it opens like an herbal tortilla chip. So think of herbal shampoo and the, tor the classic tortilla chip smell. I know that sounds weird, but it worked. I would also say as it got into the mid, it gave me something like a cilantro and basil with a powdery rice smell. No one else has described it like this. So when I sample these fragrances, I try to stay off of sites like Parfumo.com, Base Notes, Fragrantica, all those sites that give you other people's reviews. I might've seen YouTube reviews, right? But I don't wanna know what the notes are specifically because I wanna just imagine what I think it smells like. So yes, here we go. Herbal tortilla chip, <laughs> cilantro and basil and powdery rice. In the end, as this totally calmed down, it gave me something in the neighborhood of Javoy's Remember Me, Remember Me, which is a tea vanilla fragrance, like a chai tea vanilla spicy uh, fragrance that was really comforting and warm with a strong herbal touch. So somehow that just kind of worked. I know that sounds like a weird description, but I liked it. It was moderate to long lasting all around from just a sample. 
And would I want this? I went back and forth because I kept sniffing it as the hours passed on. And I landed on a strong yes, possibly. And I found it to be a captivating scent. Very strange opening where I was like, whoa, what, what's happening here? <laughs> and then it settled into something that I really enjoyed. So I have a Parfums de Marly to talk about. I have some House of Oud. And then we're going to end with three hyped up ones from Liquid or Liquide, Liquide, Liquide Imagineers. Okay, Delina La Rose. Delina La Rose. I love the way the bottle on this looks. I really do. I love that it looks like very dewy and fresh. Is this mass appealing? Absolute yes, I think. This is fresh. It's very lightly floral. I found this to be a clean, beautiful scent for late spring into the deep, hottest days of the summer. It has a slight touch of tart the way the original Delina is, but it's balanced out by this beautiful floral sweetness that's very appealing to me. It reminds me somewhat of Katra and Rose from Beaucheron, like that type of fragrance. I also have a fragrance called monsoon rose gold that's also similar these bright crisp fresh florals that are light and fun and flirty and girly for spring and summer this was moderate to long lasting all around and it's a strong yes for me in terms of what i want a bottle but maybe later this year because i have some other similar fragrances that i would like to make a bigger dent on but delina la rose is fantastic it's everything that people said it is and more <laughs> So then on to the House of Oud, I'll go to Ruby Red next. This is a no in terms of, do I think people would enjoy this in mass? En mass, no. It's citrus, it's ginger and deep florals. I really enjoyed the opening of this. However, my issue with this is that it faded quickly for me and I found it to be weak all around in terms of projection and longevity. Let me know if you've had a different experience. Again, as I've said, 3,486 times in this video. This is just from a decant. So it's hard to really know if that's the true experience or not. So I don't know that this is one that I would want to pick up, but the bottle is simply gorgeous. The bottles from this house are really, really beautiful. I mean, it's hard to beat the sort of artistic flair, unless you're just not into like the egg shape, like that doesn't do it for you. But I really like the creativity of the bottles. Then we go to what about pop? This one has been super hyped up uh, on social media and a lot of people whose opinions I trust. So when I say people whose opinions I trust, I know there are other reviewers out there that trust my opinion too. But at the end of the day, if you think about our taste as like a Venn diagram, right? There are fragrances I love and fragrances that X person, whoever that is, loves too. And then there are fragrances in the middle, like that Venn diagram that, that we both enjoy. But certainly there are some that are over here that this person just doesn't like and vice versa. There may be some that person loves that I'm just not that into. So when I talk about people whose opinions I trust, I know they're being honest about their thoughts about the fragrance. And most of our opinions are sort of in the middle, even though there's, of course, outliers. Y'all, you can't have like the exact same nose, the exact same fragrance interest as someone else. That's just I, I've never seen it. Like it's an impossible, it's an impossible thing. People's fragrance tastes are as unique as thumbprints, right? There may be some that look alike. Anyway, you get the idea. So what about pop? Let's talk about that. Gorgeous bottle. Now, mass appealing, maybe. It depends on the people smelling it. If there are people that enjoy gourmands, I think they would like this. It is what people describe. I found this to be very much a caramel popcorn scent. It's very sweet. It's very nutty. It's a very warm, enveloping, cozy, gourmand kind of scent. It was moderate all around when I tried the sample in terms of projection and longevity. Would I want a bottle? I have to say this. For now, it's a no, only because I have others that smell like it, like Che Rosa, 71, like the Boom Boom Cream, like the Boom Boom-esque sprays from Sol de Janeiro. But that doesn't mean that this isn't a great fragrance. It is fabulous. It is really, really good. <laughs> if you like the caramel popcorn kind of scent, if you don't like that, you can hate this. But if that's your zhuzh, run out and get a bottle of this. It is so pretty. And the bottle itself is just gorgeous. So if I didn't have those others, this one would certainly be making its way into my collection. Now, let's talk about the Liquid Imagineers fragrances. I'll start with Bloody Wood. What a name. I don't know what I think about that name. Oh my God, it's like a vampire name or something. I don't think that this is a mass appealing fragrance. So 
I know that some folks love this. For me, this smelled something like pomegranate juice or other kind of a really thick fruit juice. I know that it's supposed to smell like wine, red wine. Yes, there's a little bit of that, but for me, it was more like a really thick juice type of scent, red juice. And I found this to be soft to moderate in terms of projection and longevity. Let me know if your experience is different. Uh, this one is not for me. This one is not for me. That didn't mean that it wasn't an interesting fragrance. I can see why people love this. It's just not like my taste in particular. Um, I'd be willing to try it again though. It's one that I'd be willing to try it again because it is unique and different. And then let's go so, to Dom Rosa. Dom Rosa. <laughs> is it mass appealing? Capital letters, yes, I think so. This was an interesting sampling experience. I instantly smiled when I sprayed this on. I found this to be an immediate mood booster, mood booster for me. Sugared grapefruit, floral, sparkly, fun. It's like a haiku or something, right? Mood booster, sugared grapefruit, floral, sparkly, fun. This little piece is a little bit crazy, so hang with me. I did get from this fragrance, as it began to dry down, something like chicken korma, chicken korma, the Indian dish. Have you had that? I really love chicken korma. I love the way the spices smell in that. I love the creaminess of it. I love it all. Imagine a chicken korma smell with a sweet grapefruit in the dry down. It was a yes for me. This was bright and fun. It reminded me somewhat of Passessoir from BDK which also then reminds me of Burberry Her EDT, Burberry Her EDT, which I love. Just bright, sparkly, fun fragrance. Not all the same, but kind of that same feeling that those fragrances give you. My only beef with this fragrance, you remember the 80s term, you got beef, you got beef with me? My only beef with this fragrance is it's a little bit closer to the skin than I would have liked, and it has a moderate longevity. So keep that in mind considering the price point. Would I want this? I ended up after sniffing and sniffing this for hours with a yes, 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 yes. I found this to be very enjoyable and maybe sometime this year I'll be picking this fragrance up. Really nice. So then we close out this video with one that has been raved and raved about both on YouTube and on Instagram. And have I seen this on TikTok? I haven't necessarily seen it, but that doesn't mean it hasn't made the rounds there too. Blanche Bet. Is this a mass appealing fragrance? Yes, for people that like either lactonic or creamy fragrances, I'm gonna say a yes. What did this give me? So psychedelic love from Inicio is what this reminds me of, which has almond, like a really creamy, nutty accord to it, and florals, except that Blanche Bet in the opening was heavier on the florals than maybe psychedelic love is. I thought for me, this was an instant love. I found it to be nutty. I found it to be milky and dreamy. And it got a little bit thicker and creamier as it dried down, which was very appealing to me. This one, the opening of it made my eyes roll in the back of my head a little bit. <laughs> it's what we call a toe curler, a toe curler. This was moderate to long lasting all around. I mean, it's not like this huge beast mode fragrance that's going to knock people out, you know, way across the room, but it definitely has some presence. And in terms of what I want a bottle, she's made her way into the collection. Blanche Bet is on the shelves and some of my other lactonic fragrances are jealous of this one. <laughs> I really love this. I will say if you have Lavanda's Trianon, there's like uh, the same kind of hint of that in here in terms of the milkiness, right? That sort of steamed milk type of thing. There's tuberose and other, I think there's other florals in here. But I just, I really enjoy this. Do I think a lot of people will love this? I'm going to say no. I really don't think this is, even though I have yes here, but it's yes for people that like milky fragrances. Um, I think generally the public overall might find this to be too hyped, too overhyped of a fragrance. But I'm going to tell you for me, and that's the only person I can speak for. I'm, there's nobody else here to speak for. This was an instant love for me, so much so that I went and ordered it right away. 
I ordered this from Scent Split. Scent Split, which is another place that you can order decants from. They had a full size bottle. And at the time that I ordered it, they were running a discount on it. Of course, hello, they were running a discount. So I'm really excited to have this in my collection. Y'all, that's my 20 samples for today. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've tried these and you had a different experience than me, as I always say, feel free to politely share your experience in the comments so that our fellow fragrance friends can read different opinions about a particular fragrance and begin to get a full picture of what the fragrance is like. Thanks so much for joining me. Let me know if you're enjoying this series in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Take care, my friends.